Welcome back. This is Stephanie from Apex Languages and it's time for a new ornery orthography. Back in May, I started talking about periods and I figured it's about time we moved on to commas. Probably the most stress inducing punctuation mark of all. Hopefully within two weeks, I can get you feeling at least a little bit more like you're in command when it comes to these tiny terrors. Oh goody, our giant list of punctuation marks again. From all of these, the most common, of course, are the period and the comma. Bum bum bum. What is the difference between them? Well, to put it as simply as possible, periods separate complete sentences, complete ideas, while commas divide those sentences into smaller units as needed. They both do important work, reminding us to breathe every now and then if all else fails. Let's dig a little deeper. The truth about commas is there is a surprising amount of flexibility in how they're used. Everyone has their own style, and that can be perfectly fine as long as you avoid a few major mistakes. Number one, don't confuse commas with periods. Again, that's called a comma splice, and you can learn more about them in my last video on run-ons. I'll have even more do nots next time, but to start with what you can use commas for, I have both a practical list and a more formal one. By practical, I mean down and dirty, what you need to know in order to survive in the real world. In that case, use commas whenever you're dealing with a list, extra unnecessary information, and whenever you need to avoid confusion. An even easier rule to remember, add a comma for every short pause you hear when reading to yourself. Long pauses are for periods. This will work more often than not, although it is not foolproof. The next list is much more comprehensive. These are the kinds of rules that make your college professors happy. Today, we're just going to focus on numbers 1, 2, and 4. Quotation marks will save for the video on quotation marks. Fair enough, right? I'll need something to talk about there. The rest will be the focus of my next orthography video. All right, lists. Most lists either involve nouns or adjectives, and the rules are a little different for each. If I went to the store and only bought two items, apples and oranges, it's not that complicated. The risk for confusion is minimal, and so there's no reason for me to use any commas. You only need to punctuate a list of nouns if it includes three or more items as in the following example. You see, without commas, how do I know that you're not buying kiwis and stars and fruit and mangoes? It's starfruit. Sometimes noun phrases consist of more than one word, in which case those commas are especially helpful. But even in a simple list, the syntax is different and that can throw off or confuse a reader if they're not expecting it. Now, some of you savvy students may be wondering, but teacher, do I really need the comma in front of and? The answer I always tell my students, jokingly, is no, you don't need it, but if you don't put a comma, your teacher will cry. That's just my personal preference though. Both of these sentences are considered by modern standards to be perfectly correct. This comma, known as the Oxford comma, has been the subject of much debate between traditionalist and modernist, and the modernists are winning. Commas in general are becoming less and less common in recent years. Newspapers don't like to use them, because every drop of ink counts, and in our time is money society, people don't like to be slowed down by all those pauses. So again, including that Oxford comma or not is completely up to you. It does not affect the meaning of your sentence in any way. Such is not the case, however, when it comes to adjectives. Now, 
Because it's most common to use one adjective per noun, you only need two to make a list with these. Adjective lists, though, use commas in a slightly different way. Compare these sentences. Make sure to get the golden delicious apples. Make sure to get the golden delicious apples. What's the difference? Well, in the first sentence, I'm describing an apple as being both the color gold and delicious. It could be red and nasty and still be an apple because apples come in many varieties. This one just happens to have these qualities. On the other hand, the golden delicious apple in the second sentence is a specific type of apple, like Macintoshes, Galas, Honeycrisp, and Fuji. So when an adjective or a noun being used as an adjective are considered essential to the meaning of the main noun, you do not need a comma, even if you've got two or more adjectives. Talking about geographical and numerical data, etc., often involves lists as well. We have some very specific formulas to deal with those. First of all, when you call people by name, you should set that off by commas. Not if the name is used as a subject or object, mind you, like grandma is a great cook, but only if you're adding the name in there as extra information, like this is my friend, Bob, notice the pause, or let's eat grandma. Get rid of that comma in the sentence and grandma goes from being extra information with whom you were speaking to becoming dinner. And I don't think grandma likes that at all. Remember, commas save lives. On that same note, don't forget to also include commas along with people's titles. In the United States, graduates with bachelor's or master's degrees don't get to brag about it like they do in some countries. As much as I wish I could go around calling myself Stephanie Robolino master. But people with doctorates often do add an MD or PhD, and those should be marked off with commas, as here. A very important note for all commas, if the information requiring punctuation is in the middle of the sentence, like MD, make sure to include a comma both in front and behind. It should be circled on all sides. With dates, our formula is month, day, comma, and then the year. With just the month or the month and day or the year, no commas are necessary. You may not know this, but when you have the month and year with no day, you also do not need a comma. Finally, addresses. Standard address form includes a comma after the street address, after the city, and before the country, but not between the state and the zip code. If you just need to give the state and country, however, say North Carolina, US, in that case, you would need a comma in between there. Okay, a fun reminder, use at with specific addresses, on to name just your street or an intersection, and in describe larger areas like cities, states, countries, etc. But you do live on Earth, just in case you're ever talking to an alien. Our third and final category for today is conjunctions, but not any conjunctions, coordinating conjunctions. Unlike with subordinating conjunctions, both clauses combined with these are considered equal. Neither is dependent or considered more important than the other. The good news is that there are only seven coordinating conjunctions to remember, so that makes your life a little easier. And, but, or, nor, so, yet, and for when it means because. I did it for it was the right thing to do. Now, conjunctions can connect individual words, as in the first sentence here, but it's only when they bridge two complete sentences, as in the second example, that you are technically supposed to insert a comma. That means I'm looking for two main subjects 
and two main verbs. At least two verbs, because we don't usually repeat the same information in the second clause. Note how you is understood, but left out in the later part of this sentence. Do you want to order pizza or do you want to go out for burgers? We just say, do you want to order pizza or go out for burgers? Why are the commas needed here? People don't always follow this rule, but the idea is to avoid confusion by clearly pointing out where one idea ends and another begins. We are dealing with complete sentences after all, so if you can't have a period, commas are the next best thing. This becomes more important the longer and more complex your sentences. Observe. As I read, try to pay attention to the natural pauses that occur every time there's a comma. He likes her, but doesn't think she likes him back, so I don't think that he'll ask her out, nor even call her, for he doesn't want to be embarrassed, yet he really wants to. Now, you've seen all the coordinating conjunctions in action besides one, and. I saved the best for last, and by best I mean most difficult. You're welcome. You see, as I've already said, commas are becoming less and less common. Some are required. The formulaic ones I pointed out in lists and dates and addresses should always be there. But the Oxford comma is completely optional. And many people pass on the conjunction commas as well, most commonly when it comes to and. I'll buy some bread and I should also get some milk. To be fair, there's not a lot of confusion in a short sentence like this. You're buying bread plus one more thing, getting milk. When I read it all together, there's not even much of a pause. So yes, this is, practically speaking, an optional comma. My advice to you, however, is to at least try to use that comma whenever dealing with a long sentence or even a short one if there's the possibility of confusion. At the end of the day, though, it's your judgment call. Play it by ear. Literally, if you pause while reading, consider throwing in a pause for your reader. One more example for you guys. Don't forget that your cousin's best friend will be visiting a day with her dog and cat and I won't be there to pick them up from the airport. As you can see, by adding this comma and adding a pause, don't forget that your cousin's best friend will be visiting today with her dog and cat, and I won't be there to pick them up from the airport. It helps the reader identify where to breathe so they can make it through the rest of the sentence. The two ands right next to each other can throw them off otherwise, but this is a simple, easy fix. Now it's time for a little bit of practice. The question for the day are, are the commons correct? So, for example, in this first sentence, I moved to Charlotte, North Carolina in June 2020. Go ahead, read this, pause the video, and try to figure out, are the commas good? Do I need more? Do I need less? What do you think? Needs a little bit of tweaking, okay? The comma, so between Charlotte and North Carolina, that's good. You want to keep that. But remember, when you have information in the middle of your sentence, you need to have commas both at the beginning and at the end. We also did not need the comma in between June and 2020 because when you have a month and a year, no comma. Next sentence, I need paper and pens, but I have plenty of markers. What do you think about that? Oh dear, what do we need to fix? The comma in front of but is good. But remember, you only use a comma if your list, paper and pens, is more than, uh, is three or more. So you need more than these two things here to make a proper list. Okay, one more. Tonight will be a special night and I can't wait. What do you guys think? Do I need any commas?
Well, this is one of those cases where you have an optional comma. Uh, if you wanted to put one, where would you put it? In front of the and. But either way, you know, your sentence will be correct. You can say, uh, tonight will be a special night and I can't wait. Or you can do it without the comma, your choice. All right, now go take a breather. Thank you as always for watching. I hope you learned something new and useful. For more information on orthography and related writing skills, I recommend the Purdue University's Writing Lab, the websites up above. But I'll be back before you know it to finish up our discussion on commas. Until then, there are plenty of other videos on my website, apexlanguages.com, for you to check out. Stay happy, healthy, and have a great rest of your day.